Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Hi, and welcome to another episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week, I just wanted to do another solo episode with myself, and I'm just going to talk about where to find the money when for your first deal. There's a lot of different places that you could find the money to get your first deal down. I Maybe I'll just start with how I did it for my first ones, and then we can go into some other ones that will work that you know I may have done or may not have done. I'll actually just tell you which ones I've done and which ones I haven't, because there have nothing to hide there. Let's just get started by talking about my first deal and where I found the money. So originally, I bought a property on the Kitchener-Waterloo border, uh, fisher Hammond in Glasgow area. To buy that deal, I actually did a refinance, and that was before the market really took the the hit, the, like the bump that we had in the last couple of years. So this was, uh, I don't know, seven years, eight years ago. And whenever I did do this property, what I did was I just went to the bank, they gave me an appraisal on the property, and then they moved up my property and my payments barely changed, and they handed me, I can't even remember the number now, probably... Thirty or fifty thousand dollars, and I used it to buy my condo that I had up there. Um, I've long sold that property a long time ago, but anyway, I did own one there. Um, so using uh, a refinance is a great way to do to get money back out of the property. I know that you could do uh, a line of credit, which is kind of similar, where you're just taking money from your principal residence, and both of them have their own advantages. The advantage to the refinance is you'll probably get a cheaper rate. So your monthly payment will be less than if you did uh, a HELOC. But the, the perk about the HELOC is that if you have money coming in, going out, coming in, going out, you won't be paying interest when you're not using the money. So it depends what you're planning to do, what your strategy is, what would make sense, uh, which way to get the money. So I have done both ways. I Like I said, my very first one, I did a refinance. Um, my properties in the United States are pretty much all on lines of credit or used money that I've made from cash flow to buy more property. But that that's really where I've got the money. I'm not going to state that I'm some sort of millionaire that has lots of money to just go and buy all these properties. What I've done is I've been lucky enough to own my principal residence. And by doing so, when we got this crazy boom in the last, I don't know, four years, I've been able to... Uh, set up lines of credit uh, against my personal house and be able to buy a lot of real estate with that and then you know just getting smart and actually buying deals that are going to make sense and going on that note um, I'll kind of jump over to borrowing money from uh, friends and family and grandparents parents if you have an actual deal it's going to be a lot easier to get money like that if you're just buying properties off the MLS at retail value it's going to be a lot harder to convince them that this is a great idea to borrow their money. Uh, you know, with parents and grandparents, they might just be supportive that you're building this new business. But uh, for friends or private money, they're going to be wanting uh, to see that there's some sort of equity play. There's going to be uh, a burst strategy done or just a buy and hold, a burr hold at, with the, at the end so that you're going to be doing something. But really, uh, if you can find the deal first, it's going to make it a lot easier to find the money. At least that's the way all the training goes. If you find a deal that is you know, a knockout of the park, um, for instance, my property I just bought on, in the States, in Huntsville, and I bought it for $72,000, and its uh, comps are running at uh, 145 So... If you found a deal like that, you should have no problem finding someone to uh, loan you the money because there's going to be a security that you will get them. They will get their money back. If you were going to try and JV with someone, I'm sure there's lots of people that would love to be part of a deal like that that should have almost incredible instant equity. Um, I know that there probably is a renovation involved, so it might be a little bit more of a down payment. Um, depending on what kind of deal, how you found that. If you are buying a short sale or a foreclosure, you may require 100% cash. So it may be a lot of upfront cash, but you could find a partner that could do this. And then once 
you actually close the property and do your renovation, you could put the refinance and you could probably completely pay them back in a very short period of time, which at that point, it depends on, I guess, it's not your credit score, but your credit, uh, I, uh, I guess your, your knowledge and how people view you if they're gonna loan you money. But really at that point, it doesn't really make sense to take on a JV if you're just gonna borrow the money for a very short period of time, at least the way I look at it. If you're gonna do that, why not just get a private loan? Um, if you go back to, through my podcast, there's, I think I've had at least two private lenders on here and you could call them up and tell them, look at the stellar deal I have and they'll find you someone to loan the money in order to make the deal happen. And then you can close the property and two months later, pay them all back and you still have the property and ideally even have money in your pocket. That's what I'm planning to do with my latest property. Another idea is to use your RRSP. Um, I personally haven't done this, but I am very interested in it and I keep, you know what, if you are listening to the show and you are a pro on this stuff, send me an email because I would love to have you on the show. I've talked to Olympia Trust. I know that Community Trust will do this. And I know that some of the private lenders, if you talk to, like I mentioned, Karen Hayhurst, who is on the show, you can use your RSP money to do private lending through her. So you can take your money uh, from your RSP. You don't have to pull it out. Basically, you can use your RSP to fund someone's deal. I think you go on title as the mortgage and the money will not be going into your hands that comes back for the payments. It goes it's just like as if you were in a mutual fund or a stock or something like that where the profit that or sorry the interest that the uh, person is paying to borrow the money will go straight back into your RRSP. So you're not pulling your money out, you're not gonna have those fees. So it's a, a great a great way to actually make some better money on your RRSPs which I do plan on doing, and uh, but I haven't done it yet. Tax-free savings accounts, that's what I pitch to anyone that I end up talking to to stop doing the RRSP program because I personally plan to be more wealthy when I retire than I am now. And so it doesn't make sense to defer my taxes and pay tax on all of my interest at the end. So I would prefer to do uh, a tax-free savings account with uh, where I'm paying with post-tax dollars instead of pre-tax dollars. So that that's what, the way I would prefer to do it because then you also have access to that money instantly, which will make it kind of like your HELOC, your home equity line of credit, where you can access your money instantly in order to buy whatever property you need. And ideally, you have some sort of strategy where you're pulling money out of the, the uh, investment vehicle, buying property and refinancing or doing a reno or some way of building improvement and then doing a refinance to get like all or more or at least some of your money back in order to to restock your uh, whatever investment vehicle you borrowed the money from uh, and then you can rinse and repeat and that's really the name of the game if you can continue to do that that will solve a lot of your problems of just running out of money because that's the biggest thing is people like oh I have this uh, line of credit against my house and I'm going to go buy all these houses and then you buy a couple houses and you put you know a larger down payment down and you don't have any money and so your investment journey is done so I've done that I have personally done that and I'm sure that there's tons of people that have made that mistake and basically ripped through a line of credit and ran out of money but to really grow, you have to find some way to add value to these houses or buy them below value. One of these or both of these sort of strategies. Oh, another thing you could do is you could sell something. So if you, you know, had a jet ski, if you had a boat, especially if it's off season, if it's like you're going into the winter, sell that boat, get your, I don't know, 10 or 20 grand, go buy a property, uh, do some sort of renovation to the property, get your money back buy the boat again in the spring, you know, and you, then you're, you're set. You just basically borrow the money from yourself. Maybe, maybe you can get a nicer boat. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so selling something that has some value. Um, the other thing is if you had a good enough deal, if you had a deal that was, uh, you know, you bought it for 70000 and it's worth 150000 um, you know what? Call me up. <laughs> I will find the money to borrow and I will partner up with you because that sounds like a, a, a no-brainer. Um, 
and there'd be lots of people like that. If you, I don't care if the property is here in Ontario or somewhere in Canada, somewhere in the States. In all honesty, I'm really not going to go out to, you know, some of these faraway countries. I get offers from Africa and South America, and I'm really not going to go there. But if you have something in Canada or the U.S., I would uh, probably partner with you if it was a good enough deal. If you found something in there and the only thing you're missing was the money, or maybe the money and some knowledge, I could bring both of those to the deal. But it's not actually my game plan. I, at least so far, have been trying to do it all by myself, which I know is not the best technique. I know the best way is to partner with people. But I have worked with partners, and I find that they really cloud the water for myself. And I am a control freak, so I like to know everything about every number, everything that's going on. And that's one of the reasons I have properties in the United States, to get my hands out of the cookie jar so that I can't go over there and fix the toilet. I think that was a pretty good list, at least a pretty quick summary of some lists. Uh, if you guys have some ideas of your own, I would love to hear them. And I could even maybe, I don't want to do it too soon, but I could do a follow-up video with maybe some different techniques in the future. Uh, maybe we'll... Uh, yeah, just if you go to the YouTube channel, uh, Canadian Investing in the U.S., you can put comments there. You can do it on, uh, if you find me on LinkedIn, I usually post my videos there, and you can put it there. Um, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, iTunes and Stitcher, you can't really put the comments on each video, at least that I haven't found. And, uh, yeah. Oh, I know what I forgot to talk about. Your side hustles. Another great way to go ahead and make some money to even you know have like a, a side business like you always talk here about like on other podcasts at least I do about people running a flipping business as well as a, a buy and hold business and they basically use the flipping business if they're smart uh, to continue to buy houses that they hold and that's the way that they can get out of the rat race because they actually build up um, a cash flow instead of a cash pile and so you can do the same thing if you're not using real estate like you could have a side hustle you know selling stuff on Amazon you could have a side hustle eBay all I'm thinking internet stuff you could sell like stuff at the stock uh, at the, the flea market all kinds of things there's like a million side hustles there's actually side hustle podcasts. there's multiples out there I, mean, I actually subscribe to a couple of them because it, it's so interesting and I keep thinking about it but I it, it just takes a lot of time but yeah you could get a side hustle that makes some money you save up that money and you turn it into something like real estate and you buy a property and you could passively hold the property and continue to give you money forever. And that would be a way to eventually work yourself out of your side hustle and out of your original job once the passive income is higher than your uh, what your required what your monthly requirement is to live, I guess. Anyway, like I said, uh, find me on those networks. My email is glenn at glensutherland.com, and it's one N. Yeah, send me an email. I will try to help you, or I will love your suggestions. If you have some stories, I love stories, or you're interested in coming on the show. Thanks for tuning in again, everyone. Have a great uh, another week. Bye.